Coming up next on the second half of Explorer, National Geographic heads north as researchers reveal the mysterious world of the surprisingly social killer whale. And in New England, the ancient divining methods of water witches have turned some of the usually skeptical locals into believers. We'll show you why. And now back to your host, Robert Urich. Welcome back to the second half of Explore. Now, today we know them as Shamu and Willie, gentle entertainers in marine parks. But not too long ago, the killer whale was feared as a man-eater, sleek, savage, and deadly. It took a brave husband and wife team to study the orca, to take to the water with this predator, and track it in the wild. Their names are Alexandra and Robin Morton, and this is their story. Off the western shore of British Columbia, the Mortons come face to face with orcas in the chilly waters near Vancouver Island. The salmon-rich waters of Johnston Strait near Vancouver Island are home to a race of magnificent giants. This is Orca, six sleek tons, once thought to be the mortal enemy of man. In truth, this is a social, intelligent, and even gentle creature. Only recently have we begun to understand the whale we call killer. Researcher Alexandra Morton monitors the orcas of Johnston Strait winter and summer. She knows these resident whale communities as well as anyone in the world. Sounds like the A's, Jer. Can you see them yet? Yep. Yeah. This is more than work to Alex. It's a way of life. Oh, here they are, sweetie. She's even recruited her son, Jared. Please, you know what? I think it's A11. Good. For Alexandra, scientific curiosity blends with a deep affection for her subjects. They are so attractive to me. There's so much mystery there. There's so much to be learned that um, they can show up a hundred times out in front of my door and, and uh, I can't resist them. Killer whales were equally fascinating to Alex's husband, Robin. Until his death in a diving accident, the Mortons were among the handful of researchers dedicated to studying orcas in the wild. Robin was determined to document the whales' lives. Getting close to the elusive animals was hard enough, but he wanted to accomplish something even more ambitious, to film them underwater. He shot some of the earliest free diving footage of killer whales in their natural habitat. It took both skill and courage. Few dared test the orca's frightening reputation as a man-eater. Tall tales had inspired fear of the creature for generations. In 1964, a cautious attempt to take an orca went tragically wrong. The badly injured animal was towed to a Vancouver shipyard Despite the best efforts of medicine and science, Moby Doll died after 85 days in captivity. But the news coverage has stimulated public fascination. As aquariums everywhere clamored for their own Moby Dolls, a lucrative market opened up for live killer whales. With the number of captive animals growing steadily, 
researchers finally had an opportunity to study them at close range. But what really brought orcas to the public eye was their starring role as aquarium performers. Intelligent enough to learn stunts, powerful enough to evoke awe. Killer whales draw a crowd. Now we're going to start off our performance day with a spectacular jump, a double high jump. Here they are, Haida and Silica. Beautifully done here. It's going to get wet now. Watch out here, folks. Haida, Silica. What are you two? Uh oh, oh, look out! Oh, no. You're not standing back! Uh oh! Now, these are very intelligent animals. They communicate through a number of means. Primarily, they produce sounds. Now, they are a killer. They are very efficient hunters. They're also a whale. Beautiful. Some researchers have reservations about these shows. But to Robin Morton, one captive whale represented a filming opportunity not to be missed. At the sea land of the Pacific in Victoria, he got some revealing shots of a five-year-old named Miracle. Like a 3,000-pound puppy, she would play with anything, including the camera. Looks good. All right. But Robin knew there was only one way to get truly authentic shots. He would have to design an underwater camera that he could operate from the shore by remote control. Using parts acquired from a submarine engineering company, he was able to build the camera he needed, complete with a video monitor. It wasn't beautiful, but it would do the job. A comprehensive film record of whale behavior must also include their little understood vocalizations. An underwater microphone completed the rig. On the day Alex met Robin in 1980, she had come to Johnston Strait to view a whale family, or pod. Thanks to Robin's special camera, Alex got her first glimpse of orcas underwater free from the interfering presence of man. It was a moment she had long awaited. And finally, whales came around the point. It was A5 pod, which is the pod I particularly enjoy working with. And there in front of us comes A5, and he turns complete somersault. And on the hydrophone, I could hear his sound. And you could peek around the camera, and you could see him blow, and then look at the screen, and there he was underwater. And it was really thrilling because working with killer whales, the frustrating thing is you only see them when they breathe. But to actually see what was going on underwater was really neat. Alex began working with Robin. They were married in 1981. The Mortons combined his skills as a cinematographer with her expertise in whale behavior. Orcas are highly social. In these waters, the resident pods contain as many as 50 whales. In fact, they appear to be the only mammals that stay with their families throughout their lives. Each becomes a member of its pod at birth and leaves it only at death. A killer whale can never build a nest, it can never build a home, it can never live in a cave. It always has to remain right at that interface between the air and the water. So the only home that a killer whale has is its pod. And all indications show that, that to, a, to a killer whale, that home is very, very important. The whale's close connection to each other is clear even in their breathing patterns. In fact, researchers determine family lines by looking at who's breathing with whom. I watched a killer whale being born once, and after a long labor, this baby whale burst to the surface, and the mother rose with it and breathed. And from then on, the mother and the calf breathed at the same time. That baby needed more air than the mother, but she still came to the surface every time her calf needed to breathe, and she breathed with it. 
And then you go and you look at mothers and their 25-year-old sons and daughters, and they're still breathing together 25 years later. Whale families raise their young, travel, and hunt together. Each pod also shares a dialect of 5 to 15 sounds. Alexandra has devised a way of unraveling the puzzle of what those grunts and squeaks mean. What I do is I record the whale sounds by dropping an underwater microphone down off of the boat. And then I put a microphone on myself. And as the whales are jumping or swimming together, whatever they're doing, I talk into the mic. And I say, A5 is now breaching. Um, A9 takes a breath. A32 is way behind. At home, I enter this onto a computer. And as I listen to the sounds, I hear, Woo! and I type B1 and and F1. And, and then I rewind the tape and I type A5 spy hops. A32 is way behind. And so in this way, I'm able to grab what the whales are saying and what the whales are doing. Although no one can understand precisely what killer whales are saying, Alex speculates that certain sounds correspond to specific activities. The most important thing that whales are trying to communicate is where everybody's going. And they're traveling down a straight inlet and all of a sudden they come to an intersection where they could go in any number of directions. The first whale there vocalizes, we're making a right. And everybody knows to make a right. I think it's something like that. And then we also get sounds like, I'm doing good, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. They're just sort of staying in touch as they're foraging. Wild whales have developed intricate social mechanisms. But what of those forced into separation, those whose lives are restricted to tanks and pools? In 1982, Alex and Robin took Jarrett to Marineland in Los Angeles to study the first orcas to breed in captivity. For three months, they camped by the tank, observing Orky and Corky. This was Corky's fourth pregnancy. None of her other babies had survived. The new calf was born live, only to die six weeks later. Corky had been captured very young. She probably never learned how to nurse. Alexandra thinks she simply didn't know how to be a mother. In watching killer whales in captivity, I've seen some things that just tore up my heart, watching uh, baby whales die and seeing their mothers react, or watching the babies taken away from their mothers and watching the mother smash herself against the wall and break the windows. As a person who feels a great deal of affection for the whales and wants the best for them, I, uh, I certainly can't say that captivity is good for them. Next, a commitment to understanding whales and their preservation is handed down as the family continues its research in the Pacific Northwest when Explorer returns on TBS. Explorer is being brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In times of trouble, you can count on good neighbors, like State Farm and the American Red Cross. Our jobs are different, but our goals are the same, to help people. That's why State Farm, its agents and employees, are giving to Red Cross disaster relief, so that victims of future disasters will always have someone to lean on. You can help too. Call the Red Cross at 1-800-842-2200. One of the things that sets Mercury Villager apart from the rest of the minivan crowd is its unique sliding rear seat. For those occasions when you need more room, slide the seat forward. More room? Slide it forward to the middle seat. More room? Remove the middle seat and slide all the way up. And if you still need more room? Call Milo. The Mercury Villager. All this and the quality of the Mercury. The following is a geographic moment. 
the greatest thing about Everest is, is in people's minds. It's a mountain that you regard uh, with considerable respect. Here we go. Fear can be quite a stimulating factor. It's a matter of how badly do you want it? die a little bit each day. You can climb it three times, five times, a hundred times. You don't conquer it, you survive it. This camel system is so adaptive, it can travel 50 miles in desert heat without taking fluid, making it one of the world's most dependable animals. This automobile system is so adaptive that if necessary for your safety, it is engineered to travel 50 miles in desert heat without a single drop of coolant, which might also tell you something about its dependability. The Seville STS with the North Star system by Cadillac, creating a higher standard. Do you know what Hitachi makes? Ready? Go. Does Hitachi make camcorders, yes. barcode readers, yes. hydroelectric power equipment, yes. clown noses, no. power tools, yes. TVs, yes. MRI systems, yes. beanies, no. oscilloscopes, yes. micromotors, yes. mass transit trains, yes. tongue depressors, no. PBX phone systems, yes. catnip, no. semiconductors, yes. lots of products, lots. over 20,000. <laughs> yeah, but who's counting? You mean, what is it? It's the Mr. Goodwrench Quick Lube Plus Extra Large Sweepstakes. I didn't order a sweepstake. Sure you did. Come on in for a Mr. Goodwrench Quick Lube Plus oil change. Get a free game card. Well, I'm really not dressed. Win the GM car or light truck of your choice. Or one of these choice vehicles. Ten GM MasterCard cards with a $5,000 credit balance. Free Quick Lube Plus gift certificates. And thousands of free Domino's pizzas. Even Domino's Pizza gives you a game card when you order. But prizes can only be identified at participating GM dealerships. So hurry in today. Call 1-800-GM-USE-US. What a delivery. And now, back to National Geographic Explorer. For the Mortons, the vulnerability of whales in captivity underscored the importance of those remaining in the wild. In 1979, the couple began contributing to an ongoing census of the local population. Animals are identified by their distinctively shaped dorsal fins, and by the markings on their backs. Thousands of pictures were studied. All told, the tally was only 300 killer whales in the Pacific Northwest, a much lower number than expected. The strong demand for captive whales was partly to blame, but the problem was larger. The low orca birth rate makes repopulation a very slow process. Public awareness led to public outcry and in turn to protective legislation. Live captures are now firmly restricted. For Robin, it was convincing evidence of the value of educating people about the creatures that enthralled him. His documentary work became more than a cause. It was a calling. The thing that most inspired him was killer whales. He really wanted people to have the same feeling about them that he had. He put every sense that he had into filming whales. His company went bankrupt, and Robin carried on. He did all kinds of work to earn money to go back out and to continue filming killer whales. He had extraordinary drive. I mean, he, he would go to any length to get the right shot. He was willing to live out in the field 12 months of the year and struggle with all the problems of keeping equipment going and keeping enough money for his family. It was an obsession with him. Sometimes the hard work paid off. 
In the late 70s, the logging industry took an interest in a stretch of Johnston Strait, where orcas often congregated. Apparently, they came to rub their backs against the bottom. But no one had seen this behavior from the whale's point of view. Robin decided to capture it on film for the first time with his underwater camera. The footage served as a remarkable testament to the value of the beach to the whales. They gather in the shallow pebble bottom bay, perhaps to groom themselves. By rubbing against the small, smooth stones, the orcas may clean their delicate skin without irritating it. Thanks to Robin and other champions of the cause, the loggers' claims on the rubbing beach have been held in check. At least for now. Robin's work continued to the last day of his life. In September 1986, he made a dive with special equipment that he hoped would allow him closer contact with the whales. His gear failed, and Robin drowned. Alexandra and Jarrett are still based in the float house on Johnston Strait. In good weather or bad, they monitor the whales that pass their front door. The Morton's lives remain devoted to the animals that meant so much to Robin. Alex's careful, detailed observations continue to provide invaluable insight into the lives and habits of orcas in the wild. Alexandra has no fear running out of research questions. Each day is rich with new surprises. And new baby. What should we call it? Seems how it's Mother's Day. Present. Present. We could try it for a while, unless it grows up to be a big bull. <laughs> then we might have to change its name, but I'll put that down. And present showed up on Mother's Day. Not too long ago, a brand new group of almost 75 killer whales showed up near Vancouver Island. Whales that had never been seen before in the area. Startled researchers have postulated that this new group may in fact represent a completely new type of orca. But no one can be sure, because the whales disappeared almost as suddenly as they had first appeared. After all these years of studying the orca, it's a tantalizing glimpse of how much we still have to learn. We'll be back with more in a moment. Next, follow the signs to a hidden source of water as dowsers share the mysteries of divining with the technology of a twig when Explorer returns on TBS. Even the good things in life must change, like America's best-selling convertible, Chrysler LeBaron Convertible. So for 94, we decided to make a few extra changes. We included air, automatic power windows, and dual airbag standard. We even made a few structural improvements. Oh, and there was one other little change, the lease payment. It's not $4.29 a month, not even $3.29. The 94 Chrysler LeBaron Convertible is just $2.49 a month. And that's change you can put in your pocket. Hurry to your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. In the 80s, a lot of companies invested their pension funds in questionable real estate. Unfortunately, that's life. In the 80s, 
we invested most of our pension funds in investment grade bonds. That's New York Life. New York Life, the company you keep. You're watching National Geographic Explorer. There's a place where the water is as clear as a blue summer sky, where you can play, get in shape, or relax and do nothing at all. A place where you can be with your children, or with your spouse, or just by yourself. A place that's refreshing and cool, and as close as your backyard, your own pool. It's not just a place, it's a way of life. Make it yours. Call 1-800-323-3996. This Goodyear AquaTread pumps away over a gallon of water every second with its deep groove aqua channel. That's 396 gallons per mile. Think about it. The all-season AquaTread, only from Goodyear. Every year, American business wastes millions of dollars on international calls by using the wrong long-distance company. Now you don't have to waste that money. Introducing MCI's Proof Positive Worldwide. Save up to 50% off typical international calls around the world. Call by June 30th and get one month of free long distance. Call MCI now and put your money back in your business. New BioGuard Smart Sticks last up to twice as long as ordinary chlorine. Clear enough? Relax. Bring your pool to BioGuard. And now, back to Explorer and your host, Robert Urich. Almost all the ancient civilizations believed that certain people had special powers, that they could bend nature to their own ends. Through spells, incantations, and other means, they would seek to cure illness, destroy enemies, turn lead into gold. Well, today, we're much more skeptical. And yet, even today, in 20th century New England, they still use the water witches, dowsers, who find underground water with their mysterious forked rods. Is it an ancient science, some kind of black magic, or hoax that just won't go away? That's the enigma of water witching. for underground water is as ancient as thirst. Our tools for finding it, just as old. Even in the age of science, people count on water witches to find them a well. An invisible force suddenly tugs at their rods. And that's where you dig. Does it really work? Who knows? But in these parts, dowsers are the stuff of legends. Well, now this might not be the exact road. You just keep going and eventually you'll get to Danville. Look at all those cows. Most of the time, dowsers like Dwin Gordon hunt down water. But come late summer, many of them are trying to find Danville, Vermont. Well, we'll get there someday. It's a tiny country town, a place where people still draw water from wells and where dowsers are part of the landscape. Especially this week,
when they gather for their annual convention. This is a crazy week. Jazzer Week is absolutely crazy. Um, it's taking a small town of, of 2,000 people and, and throwing another 1,000 people in. A 1,000 dowsers every year. It's got to be the most doused place in the whole, whole world. Whole world. Witchcraft may be a thing of the past, but take one look at Danville Green and you know water witching is another matter. An ancient magical craft going strong in a sensible place like Vermont. Hey, there's town hall. We made it. Boy, you know, I bet we'll have some fun, yeah. I wonder if there's any of those old birds that used to come out here today. Dwyn Gordon has been coming here for decades. Hey, golly, there's one. Hey, how you been? <laughs> Tell me something. Good to see you, you making any money dowsing? Some say he and the other old timers are the last of a dying breed. Here we go. We've got a vein of water going in this direction. But that's why they're here, to do what they can to pass on the secrets of the craft. Everyone want to try it? There it goes. All parts so. There's a water vein that travels a fairly straight line. Come right over and walk right down it. Dwin's always a popular attraction. A legendary dowser with thousands of wells to his name and at least as many tales. Then I follow right along. He's one of the best dowsers in the United States of America. There it is right there. He's done terrific amounts of educating and, and lecturing. Oh, of course, he's his master. And then finally I says, Doc, why don't you go and trim the dog's toenails and we'll locate your water. Some of Dwin's yarns are new. And they got 30 gallons of water, beautiful water. But the moral of the story hasn't changed in many years. Water is liquid gold, and it's going to become more and more so. People just take it for granted. It's like you, as far as water is concerned, you turn on a tap. You don't ever think about it. digging a well or drilling a well. Well, that's the farthest thing from your mind. <laughs> You may decide you want to move out in the country. Okay, and you buy this lot out there for five acres. You get ready to build, and all at once, I, I could have water. Alan Libby has got to have water. His new house is almost finished, but he hasn't even started on the well. And without it, the house will never be done. Just think about it. Uh, you wash your clothes, you wash your hands, you brush your teeth. You, uh, you mix up orange juice, you take a bath, uh, everything's water. You need water. Alan could hire a geologist to suggest a spot for a well, but rock science doesn't offer a foolproof method. Around here, the old folks say if you want to be sure, there's one man to call. Probably a bit right here. This looks like it. This is a new house there that we're starting. Gee, isn't that a nice looking place? All he needs is a little water to go with it. Right. If you know dowsers, you probably know Dwyn Gordon. He's dows a lot of wells. Hi there. How are you doing? Is your name Libby? That's my name. Are you the grandson of Glenn? My grandfather had okay. Dwyn Gordon come out and, and dows a well for him. Well, hello, Glenn. Seen you in dog's age. They seem to hit it right on the money for him, so I'm gonna try it and see see if it works. I hope it works.
right there. There's your water. Groundwater doesn't begin in the ground. In fact, it comes from the opposite direction. Then starts a journey to the bowels of the earth. Rain does not stop falling when it hits the ground. Beneath the surface, it drips deeper and deeper, traveling in tiny spaces between grains of soil. This is no subterranean river. It's barely even a trickle. But the total volume of water underground is enormous. In fact, most of the water we use is groundwater. It's a precious and fragile resource, vulnerable to pollutants that seep into the ground. Eventually, the water reaches a depth where the ground is saturated. This is buried treasure. When a hole reaches down here, it becomes a well. A freshwater mine shaft. This watery bounty can be very close to the surface or it can be impossibly deep. There's only one way to find out for sure. Drillers usually charge by the foot and they make no promises. The only guarantee is a hole in the ground a very expensive hole. If it spouts water, the credit will go to Dwin. Hereabouts, even drillers respect water witches. No, ain't a bit superstitious. They believe in what's real and what ain't ain't. It's as simple as that. And doesn't real. Yeah, it sure is. Anybody that's in this business will tell you it's real. Anybody that owns a home as a dowser come out. If he tells him it's gonna be there and it's gonna be so many feet down, he's within two or three feet. About 22 feet, I think, before you'll get much water. I get asked every day, well, wouldn't you like to know how dowsing works? How what creates it? And I said, I could care less, we know it works. And uh, I feel that if man found out how that it worked, he probably would screw it up one way or another. You see, this thousand deal goes back years ago. Who knows just how long we've plumbed the earth for its secrets? The earliest pictures of dowsers appeared in European manuscripts over 400 years ago. In those days, dowsing rods were used to hunt for all sorts of buried riches, like silver and copper. While other occult practices declined, water witching stood the test of time perhaps because water is such a crucial need, and yet hidden deep beneath the ground, so mysterious. Still, today, dowsers are no longer the sole experts on finding buried water. How many of you know what this is? Phyllis, you must know what this is. That's a divining rod, exactly. 
I don't expect anything to come with this, but you walk around until you feel it pull. So, see, the rod is pretty, still pretty steady. Nothing here. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything here or not. Wild goose chase, if you ask me. No, oh, wait a minute now. Well, I do feel something now. Oh, yeah, now it's pulling. Oh, gosh, is it pulling. I can't, I can't hold it. It's very, very strong pull. The stick is going down. Oh, gosh, someone left some water here. Uh, we set that up. That, you, you know that that was a setup. It, it was fraudulent. Dowsers, I should say, are not frauds. I think they firmly believe that they have a power to do this. No, they certainly are not fraud. I think they have a good eye for, for terrain. They have a good eye for telling where water is more likely to be than some other place. Uh, but I don't think they're any more successful in finding water than I would be spitting and saying, let's drill there. <laughs> I've never seen any measurement of the process of dowsing that can be tested objectively that would indicate to me that there is a scientific basis for it. Oh, that's good water. <laughs> Next, will this well end up as a dry run? Dwin's legendary dowsing skills are put to the test when Explorer returns on TBS. Prudential invites you to test your knowledge of the world with National Geographic Atlas. Sikhs are followers of a religion commonly associated with what country? Pakistan, Afghanistan, India. Stay tuned for the answer right after this. One, we believe building good relationships means treating clients like adults. Two, adults don't like to be sold. They like to be educated. Three, brokers serve clients best by speaking their minds. You don't get anywhere with yes men. Four, being straight with our clients is the simplest way to get things done. Five, I think our clients would agree. And now the answer. India. Of the more than 860 million people living in India today, about 2% of the population are Sikhs. The Sikh religion originated in the 15th century in the state of Punjab in northwest India. Sikhism combines beliefs from both Hinduism and Islam. BMW convertible is going for these days. The new 318i. How long is a minute? A minute is long enough for 19 smiles and three seconds a smile. For six giggles and a chuckle. A minute's long enough to hug two grandchildren very tightly. Or fall in love at first sight. And today, more people keep track of their minutes with a watch from Citizen than any other timepiece on Earth. Citizen, the most preferred watch in the world. Citizen watches how the world tells time. It all runs together. Time for our jobs, ourselves, our families. Is there something that connects us, something that transcends time and distance? Well, there's Mobile Link. Only cellular service that has Mobile Link makes it easy to stay connected almost everywhere, all the time, or just whenever. Make sure your local cellular service has Mobile Link. Call 800-995-4000. I was in town for business, and thanks to the rental car, I had time to stop by the old neighborhood. The place hasn't changed a bit. Room for one more? Can't beat the shoes. Want to visit your old neighborhood? Rent from Dollar. They're right on the airport, right on the money. Hey, it's 
got to be the shoes, right? Nope, it's the rental car. Call Dollar, the official car rental company of the NBA. Monday night on TBS, he's good with animals. They're the only family I have. And he's not bad with a sword. The Beastmaster! But can he handle... L.A.? You Tarzan, me... Coberly. TBS presents Beastmaster 2 through the portal of time. We must be in the land of lunatics. The battle between good and evil moves to the city of angels. You and I have a score to settle. Beastmaster 2, 8.05 Eastern, Monday night on TBS. And now, back to National Geographic Explorer. Water witches say there are mysteries that science just cannot explain. So far, debunkers haven't dampened their spirits. It is entertaining for everybody in town uh, who has the chance to sit here and watch what's going on on the green. At the dinner last night, there was quiche. Quiche, of all things. You know what I mean, Dick? And then he dows over the quiche to make sure this is all fresh stuff that we only made it an hour ago. They do the <laughs> same thing in the general store. They come in, they'll dows uh, the produce. I swear they come in the hardware store and buy batteries for their rods. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Late afternoon, winds 22 feet have come and gone. We ought to get some water, I would think, another two, three feet, but who knows? The drill inches deeper. At $25 a foot, the hole in Alan's pocket grows bigger and bigger. he's going to find water. What do you think we got him up here for? <laughs> They'll find water, all right. Uh, we may be off a foot or so on the depth or something, but I don't think we'll be off too far. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to thought we could have hit it at 20 feet, but we didn't. So let's hope we hit it before morning. <laughs> it's almost like I could see this water at times. And this is something that very, very few people apparently can do. He's going to get water here. They may not get it tonight, but I think there'll be quite a lot of water in that hole in the water. If there is no water here at all, this will turn out to be an amazingly unlucky patch of New England. Statistics that I have compiled for Maine suggests that about 90% of wells drilled in rock are successful because 99% of New England is underlain by water. Anywhere you drilled in New England, 99% of it you'd find water. That means that the dowsers get a very good reputation. Anybody can say, let's drill here, and they're going to be as successful as dowsers are. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with dowsing. I think dowsing is fun. It's a good magic show. That's probably why dowsing has arisen, because, uh, you know, you cannot see into the ground. You can't see down the ground. It's very magical to drill a hole in the ground and find water down there. So why not use something mysterious to find it? It certainly makes sense.
boy. There it goes. Yeah, she is, boy. Yeah, yeah she blows. I, 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 I want to say uh, yep. goodbye to you, and it's been a pleasure. I will be in and time. I, you'll be in touch, and I hope that you'll uh, enjoy the water. I'll invite you out for a drink of that. Oh, How's okay, that? good. And uh, you, you just think of me every time that you flush the toilet. <laughs> I will. Yeah. I'll we'll you the way. say goodbye and uh, good luck. Okay, we'll take see care. You later. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Well, we'll be something lucky on weather. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. National Geographic Explorer will be right back. Want to hear something wild? Geographic Explorer, 9 p.m. Eastern on TBS every Sunday night. Some fear the passage of time. Others welcome it because it will reveal their strengths. Now, J.D. Power & Associates reveals that the best overall car line in vehicle dependability at five years of ownership no longer comes from Germany or Japan. The leader is Cadillac creating a higher standard as time goes by. The big names are on Turner Classic Movies. The new channel with the greatest movies of all time and no commercials. The leader. Call your cable company and ask for Turner Classic Movies, the new channel for great movies. This year, more fathers and sons will spend Saturday mornings together. More couples will celebrate golden wedding anniversaries, and more friends will get to know each other a little better. State Farm is pleased to announce that last year, almost 2,000 fewer people were victims of drunk drivers because programs like Designated Driver are working. But we still have a long way to go. Please, be a good neighbor. Be a Designated Driver. Next on TBS, Throughout recorded history, insects have been a staple in human diet. Has their time come again? Insects may hold the key to preventing worldwide famine. Find out how on Network Earth, coming up next on TBS. You're watching National Geographic Explorer. Do you know what Hitachi makes? Ready? Go. Does Hitachi make camcorders, yes. barcode readers, yes. hydroelectric power equipment, yes. clown noses, no. power tools, yes. TVs, yes. MRI systems, yes. beanies, no. oscilloscopes, yes. micromotors, yes. mass transit trains, yes. tongue depressors, no. PBX phone systems, yes. catnip, no. semiconductors, yes. lots of products, lots. over 20,000. <laughs> yeah, but who's counting? Bill Snodgrass is out there. Yet his dog sled tours are off and running. Hi, this is Bill from Washington Albany. He relies on AT&T to connect with his customers. The most reliable long-distance service is his AT&T business advantage. You see, where Bill does business, dependable long-distance service is a matter of survival. AT&T works for me. Let AT&T work for you. Peerless Fawcett didn't come up with the idea for a spout long and high enough to reach over and into large objects. We merely adapted it for the kitchen. High-rise faucet designs by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. The NBA playoffs continue. Game 3, Rockets and Blazers. Live following Braves baseball Tuesday night on TBS. Well, that's all for this time, but next week we're heading out to Grand Cayman Island. I'm going to get a chance to do a little scuba diving as we bring you a special show on the mysteries of the deep. Here's a preview. 
Next week, on a special edition of Explorer, we'll descend into the ocean's depths and uncover the mysteries of the deep. Join host Robert Urich as he dives into the beautiful Caribbean waters off the Cayman Islands. First, see the world through the eyes of a shark. Our revolutionary camera system rides on the animal, giving us images never before seen. But breaking new ground can be risky business, as researchers found out deploying the Critter Cam. Then travel for miles through ocean currents teeming with life, as Explorer takes you into an exotic undersea world that's just beginning to be revealed. That's next week on National Geographic Explorer's Mysteries of the Deep. I'm Robert Urich saying so long for the National Geographic Society. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can watch National Geographic Explorer every week. Sunday nights at 9 Eastern. Monday nights at 9.05 Pacific, 12.05 Eastern. And Saturday mornings at 10.05 Eastern. Next on TBS, is the air quality on airplanes causing severe health problems? Investigate the truth with Network Earth. Coming up next on TBS. Explorer has been brought to you by Compaq, makers of the easy-to-use Presario computers. Random access memory. Bombard. Really good. Now, once again, gigabytes. At Compaq, we realized that learning about computers can be pretty intimidating. So we invented Presario, computers designed and priced to make it easier. They come loaded with all the software you need to get started right away. And they're backed by a three-year warranty. WYSIWYG. So instead of sounding smart about computers, you can be smart about computers. The new Presario from Compaq. Introducing the Chrysler LHS lease. It gives you traction control and cruise control. It gives you dual airbags and anti-lock brakes for added safety control. And now for only $329 a month, it gives you more financial control. But see your dealer. This is a limited offer, and that's simply beyond our control. Chrysler LHS, an eloquent expression of form following function at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers for only $329 a month. The Matlock Sunday Movie on GBS. The following is a TV.